And of course, we have genetic engineering, which is a cutting edge technology um, that has um, revolutionized uh, certain parts of agriculture. Genetic engineering is basically um, the ability for you to separate out a particular gene which carries a certain uh, trait of interest. Um, and you can transfer that gene into the plant that needs that particular trait. And, and you basically change the plant, uh, genetically at least. You know? And you are able to produce your desired traits. Um, and these desired traits can be anything from high yields. It could be a resistance to, to uh, pests and disease. Uh, it could also be um, the ability to, um, to grow uh, in a shorter time span so that you have more production in a given time. And it could also be for um, weather adaptation. As you know, our weather is changing today. It no, it, it no longer used to be um, like it was. And uh, we have, of course, the fancy name for it is climate change. Um, it's true that our crops have, have become very affected due to climate change. And so we may not be able to change the climate in our own way, but we can at least change the way the crops respond to this climate. So genetic engineering involves modification of genes in plants and animals in order to produce new attributes. Uh, what is really happening is a gene from the same species or another species is being introduced uh, to the target plant or organism. Or there is a modification to gene expression. And this gene could be either one or more. Okay? And this is a diagram which explains to you uh, how the operational procedure for genetic engineering happens. You have a gene, for example, uh, this gene is supposed to code for flower color. And, and this um, um, particular gene is then um, extracted, um, and then it is it has gone through a process where it is um, multiplied and, and then is inserted into the target. Now, this is a, a technology that is also known as recombinant DNA. And um, it has been widely used in many uh, different crops um, to make things more efficient and to make things more um, uh, desirable. So here again is the, the schematic that shows how gene transfer takes place you know, from a single uh, gene that is isolated and modified. And you can see here they, there are more copies of this particular gene uh, inserted into the plant cells and they are induced to grow. And seeds from mature plants are then um, carefully monitored for successful transformation. So, so this is a very fascinating uh, piece of technology that is um, changing again the face of agriculture. Uh, of course, I'm not saying everything is um, A-OK -okay with uh, gene transfer technology. There's, there's also a lot of uh, other issues that has been generated as a result of this technology. But the core of this technology is really to improve yields, to, to confer plants with the ability to resist pests and disease problems, and of course, weather adaptation, and also um, to increase uh, other efficiencies within the crop, okay? such as shorter growing cycle and so on. Okay, and uh, then we have, of course, the, the, the act of planting itself. And we have, um, you know, the seed drill, which is which has been there for, for a pretty long time. Um, of course, uh, the seed drill has gone through um, transformation itself. You know, they have perfected the, the machine. They have perfected the, the technology in many ways. And it's now been widely used in 
many uh, industrialized countries, especially in large farms. And uh, of course, this undoubtedly increases your, your labor efficiency. And uh, planting is basically a fully mechanized operation in, in these uh, systems. Then, of course, we have uh, fertilizer technologies. And uh, as you know, fertilizer is a very basic uh, input for crop production. And uh, the real aim here for fertilizer, uh, at least the new technologies, is really to increase nutrient uptake efficiency. There's a tremendous number of fertilizer products out there in the market. And uh, what makes a difference among these products is really on their nutrient uptake efficiency. So we have, uh, over the years, we have seen uh, the development of many different types of fertilizer carriers or sources. Uh, we have organic fertilizers that are basically plant or animal biomass uh, manipulations. And then we also have a huge range of chemical fertilizers that um, have been improved in many ways. Um, some of these straight chemicals, uh, we call it straight fertilizers, that only supply a single nutrient. Uh, they have been steadily improved in terms of um, efficiency. A good example is urea. Urea is a very volatile <laughs> fertilizer simply because it undergoes a chemical procedure in the soil, um, which is known as uh, volatilization, where it releases gaseous ammonia to the environment. And this greatly reduces its efficiency as a fertilizer. Um, studies have shown that up to 55% uh, volatilization can be easily recorded under field conditions. And <clears throat> So by coating urea with a particular um, element, uh, it reduces um, the problem of volatilization. Um, so there's been a tremendous amount of improvement in, in that segment of uh, urea efficiency. And of course, we also have natural fertilizers. A uh, good example here is rock phosphates. And rock phosphates are usually found as deposits in in, um, in a natural environment. And uh, rock phosphates pr provide for phosphorus uh, nutrients into plants. And phosphorus is a very, very important nutrient. Okay? Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are the three basic uh, uh, macro elements that are required by plants. Uh, and uh, <coughs> there's also been a decent amount of improvements in terms of nutrient delivery. Um, of course, we have um, what is known as the cover crop. Now, cover crop is, a, is also known as green manure. And uh, this enables um, uh, nutrients to be, to be recycled back into the system. So green manure is non-chemical. It's, um, it's basically organic. Uh, it's a natural way of getting back your nutrients. Um, we have cover crop practice in, in crops like oil palm. And in oil palm, it is mandatory to establish cover crops because it not only serves as a source of nutrient, but it also serves to protect um, the crop from the effects of the environment. For example, if you have heavy rainfall events, especially in the tropics, rainfall is of high intensity and it's frequent. We have heavy uh, counts of uh, rainfall. And uh, these kind of uh, rainfall events can actually erode the soil. So when you have um, a layer of cover crops established on the surface of the soil, it prevents the rain from having direct contact with the soil, and therefore you minimize erosion. And uh, another function of cover crop, uh, especially in, in the case of oil palm, is really to conserve moisture. So it prevents the soil from heating up. And, and, and by doing so, it provides for um, a better response uh, of the crop towards the micro environment. Okay. And then, of course, we have um, new um, advancements in 
compound fertilizer. Now, compound fertilizer is, is more efficient than straight fertilizers. Uh, and compound fertilizers is when you have more than one nutrient packed together in a compound formulation. Um, and usually we have three in ones, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, also known as N, P and K. And sometimes we have four in ones. We also include other uh, elements, for example, magnesium. Um, and, and so this allows the plant to be able to have a complete meal. Okay? So, and it also saves um, uh, cost in terms of application you know, of the nutrients. You don't have to apply more than uh, one type of fertilizer in a given cycle. Okay, you just apply one and they have all three nutrients or all four nutrients. Then of course we have trunk injection which is a superior um, technique of delivering the nutrient to the plant. Um, this example which I have here shows you um, a motorized syringe which is been used to bore a hole into the bark and, and then nutrient is then um, injected into the plant. Now this technique is far superior than the common technique of applying nutrients into the soil simply because it reduces the, the journey of the nutrient from source to sink. Okay? So by having it injected into the bark, it shortens that, that journey of the nutrient. So it's like you know, taking the um, uh, highway instead of taking the trunk road. Okay, so that's an analogy here. Then of course we have foliar application, which is also based on that same concept as trunk injection, meaning to say you're trying to shorten that journey of the nutrient um, between the source and the sink. So in the case of foliar application, uh, as you know, leaves are where uh, photosynthesis happens and it's where food is manufactured within the plant and, and then food is assimilated down to all other parts of the plant. And when you apply the nutrients to the folia, to the foliage, what we have is a very efficient absorption of the nutrients and, and therefore your uptake efficiency increases. Okay?